Well, you asked for it, and it's my privilege to deliver it to you. I'm going to help you become a better woodworker with geometry. Hello folks, Chad Stanton here, a professional furniture maker of over 20 years, and I'm sharing my experiences with you. Now, in my last video, I had asked what you guys wanted to see next, and I had so many people comment that they want another geometry lesson. Well, the timing couldn't came out perfect. See, I was working on this little project here in the shop, and I was just using some scrap wood that I had laying around. Well, it turns out I ran into a problem, and it took geometry to solve it. So let's take a look at what that problem was. All right, so here's the project again. And originally, when I was making this, I had a leftover piece of elm uh, that was about 17 and a half by 17 and a half. When I cut the circle out and set it on top of the legs, well, it looked more like a short, wide stool instead of a small little coffee table. I decided that I needed uh, about 20 inches or a little bit more, but unfortunately, I didn't have another uh, large slab that would have made those dimensions. So here's what I wound up doing. All right, so for me to get that extra three inches I wanted, that meant I had to add an inch and a half to each side. Now, I did have a long board that was the same thickness as what this elm was, but I had to figure out a couple of things. First, just by adding an inch and a half wasn't gonna be enough material because I actually have to consider these two curves on it. The second problem that I'm gonna run into is to join these pieces together I have to miter these angles and I have to figure out what that angle actually is. All right, so to do that, I'm using some geometry. So let's go take a look at the solution to my problem. Okay, so I have some brown builder's paper that I'm gonna use, uh, some compasses or dividers, protractor, straight edge, so on. Now, um, I like to use the brown paper a lot to make full-size drawings. Now, some people in my other videos have asked me, well, Chad, why don't you use a, like a CAD program like SketchUp? And I do use SketchUp. I use that mostly uh, to make an idea for what the furniture piece will be like. But when I'm working on things that are very specific, um, I like to use the brown paper for a couple things. One, I can get a one-to-one -one full size uh, view of what I'm trying to make. The second thing is I can sometimes like in this case, cut that circle out and place it on top of my table uh, to get a visual uh, to walk around and see if it's too big, too small, and make changes. And lastly, I like to use it because if I'm building something that has multiple pieces, I can literally uh, place each part on here, kind of like a puzzle or a map, to make sure that everything is lining up and fitting exact. Okay, so uh, let's get started. Okay, for this demonstration, I'm not gonna do the actual full size of what the table over there was, which was like 17 and a half. Uh, let's do something smaller, say 10. Okay, we'll start with 10. So I have my uh, highly precision, precise compass here with the marker taped on it. I'm sure this is gonna do lovely. And I have it set for uh, five inches. That, that would be the radius at five inches, and it'll give me a diameter of 10. So let me draw that out. Okay, and just like the table, we want it to be three inches bigger uh, overall. So that'd be an inch and a half on each side. And I'll just reset the compass to that. Okay, that's pretty close for this, this thing. And I'll draw another circle. Okay, now I want to get those six equal segments, uh, make a hexagon. So if you watch my other geometry videos, you've seen me do this uh, trick before. So I'm going to put a, a mark here, which should be where I start and end. And without changing any settings to the compass, I'm going to paste off six times on this outer circle. If I did this right, 
I should end up exactly where I started. And yes, very nice. Okay, now I just have to connect the lines. And there we are, just like our table. Okay, but we still don't have the answer to our first problem, which is how thick does this piece have to be to be an inch and a half on a curve? So the first thing I want to do is I want to connect a line between these two points. Now I want to take a measurement of the widest area along here, and that would be right at the top of this arc. And I'm just going to measure that real quick with a, with a compass. So now I'm going to take the compass and I'm going to come down to this point, make a little arc. I'm going to move it over here to this point, make another arc. And you, you could probably get away with just drawing a line through that now, but just to try and be as precise as possible, I'm going to use the square. I'm going to line it up with that, bring a line up here to where it intersects with that arc. I don't know if you can see that. Do the same on this side. And then I'm going to connect these together. And I'm going to make the line make the line a little bit longer. Okay, and now I'm just going to connect these two lines so they intersect with this one up here. All right, this now has given us the width that we need as well as the length of this one piece. So let's take a measurement of what we got. So I got about two and a quarter in width and in length here. I'm going from point to point. Um, looks like seven and five eighths. Uh, so maybe add in the kerf cut you know, for your saw blade, an extra eighth of an inch. Uh, so let's say seven and three quarters uh, times six. Uh, you know, a piece somewhere around, I don't know, 45 and a half, 46 inches long. Uh, that's uh, about what you would need to make six of these going around. So there we go. We figured out the problem to our first issue, which was what's the size of that board we need. Now the second thing we have to solve is uh, what is this uh, cut going to be on the miter saw? So what we want to do is we want to take uh, a protractor and we need to measure this angle. Now I'll explain why in the second example, but it's real important that you measure this angle out here and not this angle in here. Okay. And you're going to say, why, Chad? They look the same. Uh, hang on, we'll get to that. But let's take a reading at what we got. So I line my line up, and it's intersecting at 60 degrees. OK, 60 degrees. That's what I got. Another thing we can do is we can use a sliding bevel. Now, a bevel has no numbers, no scales, n nothing on it, okay? Um, but, but we can still get a reading from it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the handle on this line and I'm going to move the arm until it lines up with the other line. And then I'll lock that down. Okay, before we go over to the miter saw, I want to show you something. I already went ahead and I cut a scrap piece of wood at our 60 degrees that we got from the protractor. And here's the results. Clearly, even a blind man could see that this 60 degree angle is nowhere near what we have on the paper here. And so why is that? Well, I will do my best to try and clarify that uh, over there at the miter saw. 
All right, we already established that uh, our reading of 60 degrees on the protractor is not giving us the results we want. Uh, so why is that? Well, let's take a look here. I'm going to take the, the protractor and I'm going to put our, our zero baseline against the fence. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the uh, miter saw arm using this edge, okay, this straight edge, and I'm going to turn it until we get 60 degrees uh, on our protractor. Okay, I'm not sure how well this is showing up on the, the camera, but coming off of here right to this mark and following this line up, it intersects right at 60 degrees, just like we had on the drawing over there. But take a look at our miter saw scale. It's reading 30 degrees. That's the cut we actually want to make, not 60. So uh, why is that? Well, here's the best ex explanation I can give you for kind of a confusing topic. Our protractor, again, goes from zero to the middle which is 90. However, on our miter saw, we know that the middle is not 90. The middle is, well, zero. If we turned it to, let's say, if we turned our miter saw to 60 degrees, the protractor angle reads 30. So what does this mean? Well, it's real simple, okay? Whatever number you get on your protractor, you're just going to subtract it from 90. So 90 minus 60, it gives us our 30. Now, let me show you another example of that. Plus, I'm going to solve potentially maybe another small problem you might have. Oh, I almost forgot. Remember that bevel? Well, let's set it up on the miter saw. So I'm going to take the handle and put it against the fence, and then I'm just going to turn the miter saw uh, till it lines up, lines up with the arm of the bevel. And there you go. Look at that. 30 degrees. No math, no numbers, no problem. Okay, before I give you another example of the angles on this, uh, I want to show you another solution to a problem. Let's say that you want to make your table at three extra inches wide, but you don't have a piece of wood that's two and a quarter inches wide. You have something smaller. Is this still possible? Well, the answer is yes, uh, but we have to do a little bit more work. So instead of having uh, six pieces, we're going to divide it again, and we'll have a total of 12 pieces, okay? Now, I'm not going to do all 12 for you here. I'll, I'll just do one, but I'll, I'll show you how that works. Uh, so once again, this is uh, nothing new. I've done this trick in other geometry videos. But I'm taking the compass, and I'm just eyeballing it. I just want to set the compass somewhere more than halfway between these two points. So you can see that this is clearly larger than that. And I'm going to make an arch at the bottom and an arch at the top. Okay. Now I'm going to switch to the other side and I'll do the same thing. Arch at the bottom, arch at the top, so that, let me see, the two arches intersect and then I'm just going to connect these lines to the middle and that will give me exactly half now, to figure out the size of this piece, I'm just going to do the same steps that I did over here. Okay, so now let's take a measurement from this. So this piece measures about an inch and seven eighths, considerably smaller than our two and a quarter. And the length, well, the length is about about three and a half inches. So you're going to take that three and a half, you're going to multiply it by 12, 
and you're going to be somewhere around uh, you know, 42, 43 inches in length. So yes, it can still be accomplished. Now I want to come back to this angle because now to cut this on the miter saw, it's going to be different. And again, remember I said we want to measure this angle, not this angle. So to give you an example why, back to this one, you say, Chad, well, these two angles look the same. Well, absolutely, they're correct. Uh, that's giving me 60 degrees. And if I put this over here, that's also giving me 60 degrees. Why can't I measure it from anywhere? Well, that's because this is an equilateral triangle. In other words, these three sides are the same length and these three angles are the same length. And every triangle will add up to 180 degrees. And so you take the 60 times it by 3, you get 180. On this one, if I measure that, I'm going to get 30 degrees. That is not the number we want. Again, we want to be out here. If I take this measurement, going over with this line, reading the red line going over, I have 75. Okay, so I'll write that down. 75 degrees. 75 is here, 75 is here, and this is 30. This is uh, um, an acute isosceles triangle, if I remember right from school. Uh, in other words, these two angles are the same. This is going to be different, but they still all add up to 180. This at 75, once again, just like before, we're going to the miter saw. We have to subtract it from 90. And that will give us 15 degrees. So let's go back to the miter saw. And one more time, I'm going to set my bevel to that. And we'll see if our numbers are accurate over there. Okay, so just like before, I'm going to turn the miter saw to our reading, which was 75. And I can tell you right now, on this particular miter saw, I can't even swing it a full 75. This, this right side goes up to 60, uh, the left side goes up to 55. But we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to use this edge on the miter saw arm, and I'm going to turn it until it reaches our number of 75. Okay, so once again, following the line through, I hit 75, and once again, our reading down on the miter saw scale is 15. So again, we simply subtracted 75 from 90, got us 15, and that is the miter cut that we want to do. Uh, once again, Let's take the bevel and see what we got. And same thing, we line up right on the money. So I'm sure some of you are probably thinking, um, Chad, why would I want to use the protractor? Uh, I have to remember to subtract everything and blah, blah, blah. It looked like the, the bevel was uh, super fast and easy, no math needed. Well, uh, that's true. But I will say that with the bevel, you can be off. If you don't get your lines just right with this, you're going to be off a little bit. Even half a degree is going to cause gaps when you try and put this together. So there is a product out there that, that I use quite a bit. Uh, it's nice. I would recommend it. It's the uh, Sterrett. Pro Sight Series uh, Miter Saw Protractor. And so what this has done is, on this scale, it has already figured out the math for you. You don't have to do any subtracting. And so there's two scales on it. If you just want to make a single cut, you're going to read the outer numbers, or the black, and it will tell you what to set your miter saw at. Again, the miter saw. If, say, you want to make the miter cut of it, you want to divide that piece in half, uh, you're going to read the inside, the red scale, and the red arrow tells you the miter cut. And I have found this to be very, very accurate. 
So uh, it's, it's not a bad tool to invest in. But keep in mind, uh, these numbers are not the same numbers uh, you're getting from the protractor. This has figured out the math already. And I do want to say that uh, even if you're doing your drawings on a CAD program like SketchUp or something, uh, your angles are always going to come out the, the protractor angles. So you're still going to have to do some math uh, when you get out here in the shop, okay? And there you have it, how I solved my problem with geometry. Well, I hope you liked this episode. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, because it really does help me uh, with my channel on YouTube. Now, if you're interested in seeing more geometry lessons over on my channel, I do have a playlist where it's nothing but uh, woodworking and geometry lessons. So another thing I wanted to share with you is over on Facebook, I have a group page called What Are You Doing? And this is where you can post your pictures of the projects you're building in your shop or ask questions or just go there to get some inspiration. And I posted a picture of that little tiny coffee table. And it had a lot of likes and comments. And a couple people said uh, in the comments, Chad, please tell me you filmed the making of that table. And the answer to that is, yes, I did. But that brings me to asking you all a question because I value your opinion. Would you like to see next in a video the making of that little coffee table? Or uh, I've been building some drawers for a customer uh, project and I'm using a drawer locking router bit. Now, I've had this bit for a long time, but I never used it until recently. Why? Because when I bought it, it didn't come with any directions on how to set it up. It had one little tiny profile picture of what your cut will look like, so I could get an idea how the joint went together, but I still didn't know what those measurements were to actually uh, make the cut. So if you want, I could show you a step-by-step -step of how to set that bit up, um, how to make some setup jigs for it for next time so it's quick for you. And that's the beauty with this bit. It's fast, it's strong, and it's reliable. So uh, let me know in the comments below whether you want to see next the table or if you want to see drawers. Also, too, I want to comment real quick. I do have a monthly newsletter that goes out. It's sponsored by uh, Crystalac, KenCraft, and FrontWord Web Hosting. Because of those sponsors, I'm able to offer to you for free. So if you are interested in that, there's a link to that below in the description. Now, any of the tools that you see me using in my videos, if you're interested in having them, I do have a link down there for the uh, recommended tools that I use as well as I have a link for uh, recommended reading because I really feel that having a good library of woodworking books uh, will aid to your skills improving. As always, if you have a question you are working on in your shop and would like some help, feel free to write me at woodchoppingtime at gmail.com because honestly, the whole purpose of this show, this channel, was to help you become a better woodworker. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, keep on dancing.